2013. There's only one way to bring Vaporwave back. No, Anthony Fantano, you cannot stop me from trying to bring back the sanctity of the vapors. What I must do is use Forbidden Aesthetic. And in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to use Forbidden Aesthetic. First, you're gonna need a piece of paper, and since Vaporwave is purple, you draw, you draw a circle, and next, you're gonna need an idol figure of sorts. So I have this elephant tusk figurine of death in which I will place the circle on top of. Next, we're gonna need something vapor wavy. So I have this cassette um, and, and I'll place it right here. Shit. And now all I have to do is say the magic word. And you know what that word is. Yeah, come a little closer. It's okay to get to zoom in on my face just a little bit. That word is memes. Just kidding, it's aesthetic. <laughs> Did I do it? Did I bring Vaporwave back from the depths of the unknown? What the fuck is that? No! No! Hello internet, it is me, Frank Jab C, the father of modern irony. Just kidding, I am doing this on purpose. Today I will be reviewing the Vaporwave album Smash Hit of the Summer if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, Vaporwave is Dead by Sandtimer. For those of you who don't know who Sandtimer is, nobody knows who Sandtimer is. For all you know, I could be Sandtimer. Or perhaps a Fex twin is Sandtimer. Or perhaps Skrillex is Sandtimer. But nobody knows who Sandtimer is, and they made this album, and I am going to promote it and review it on my channel since I am mostly known for my Vaporwave content. For this modern analysis on YouTube, I shall be going through the tracks individually one by one and giving you my opinion on them. Starting off with the first track, Prepare to Die, is 24 seconds of spooky monsters with a kick drum. Track number two is called Recycle, which does not sample any trash bin noises that I am aware of, but does a good job at sampling babies crying, very much like those who are fans of Vaporwave bitching to me 24-7 on the Twitters. I very much like the schizophrenic voices that are in the track, and there are also machine gun samples. The third track is called Vaporwave Alive, and I like the giant fart at the beginning, which leads into the rain, and then there's that Macintosh Plus sample that makes me go, what the fuck? Track four, The Hunt Is On, is a glitch, super compressed beat that sounds very much like, did you ever watch that Batman cartoon where it's like super edgy? It was like the teen, when the Teen Titans were edgy, like imagine like in a future rave club where there's all these people dressed up in funky clothes, that's exactly what it sounds like. And then there's this deep house thing that just goes like, ding, ding. Ding, ding. The fifth track, Ambient, isn't an ambient track at all. In fact, it is an 808 beat with a siren on top of it. And it starts off with this podcast where people are like, Vaporwave, Vapor, and then there's a baby crying to symbolize what we all are on the insides, just infants screaming our insides out in front of everyone. Track six is called Public Service Announcement, which is a public service announcement to everyone to destroy Vaporwave. However, this track sounds more like it should be titled War, which the seventh track is called, but does not sound like War whatsoever because this track has just like a bunch of guns going off in it. It's very America. Track seven is called War. However, it sounds more like Chaos of the Void, which is the next track, but that track reminds me of a Crystal Castle song and should be called something vapor wavy like, um... Track 9 features the cliche MIDI instrumental, which is just a ripoff of Phil Collins' song that he did for that one commercial with the gorilla playing drums. Track 10 is called Hydrospawn. I very much like the metaphor of a Hydrospawn being seen as vaporwave because you just cut off one head and then two sprout out of it and you keep on cutting them. It's just a tangled mess of just lies. Very much like a virus. Track 11 is called Vaporwave is Dead. That track starts off all mystical and atmospheric and wiggly and stuff. And then out of nowhere, someone just fucking shoots Vaporwave and then Vaporwave's dead and you hear like a bee. And then you hear someone's crying, like they're all crying, but it's pitched down to make it, you know, super Vaporwave. Track 12 is a message from uh, some Kostovich dude and he speaks like Russian or Eastern European or some sort of language. But he has like a thick accent and it's basically just propaganda for a new subgenre that people are doing now called hard vapor 
and track 13 is Welcome to Hard Vapor. It's basically minimalistic techno with hard style elements and I really like the Pac-Man noises. It makes me want to chomp on magic pills and then run around for hours. Have you seen that shirt? Of course you've seen that shirt. It's 2016. And if you're watching this from the future, please tell me what happened. I really want to know what happened. 14, an ode to Vaporwave is like one of those, you know how there's like this genre of piano, like asthma kind of like movie soundtrack filter thing coming in? It's like that, but with like a choir sound. Track 15 really pulls this whole entire cohesive experience together. It's called The Architect. And it starts off with you listening. It's like a virtual reality game, only you only hear it, you have to close your eyes and you have to imagine it. But like, if this type of genre gets pushed more in the future, where you get like a virtual reality helmet, plus like the songs playing, plus you can travel around like a video game, that I think is gonna sell a shit ton. But first it starts off with you're in an elevator, you hear the vaporwave music playing, you get out of the elevator, then a, a, a Gladys robot voice is like, and then like the architect shows up and he's like, I'm Vaporwave and I'm God and I sound like Voldemort and I also sound Jamaican. I'm from the UK. And then he starts talking about like some like, if you're like a fake deep teenager, you'll be like, oh my God, this is so true. But like if you're a disillusioned millennial 20 or something like me, you start realizing, oh, he's just talking about the singularity, which we're all trying to reach in like the next 50, 60, 70, 100 years from now. But this song pulls everything together at the end with the end credits. Track 16 is the best fucking song of this entire album. It's fun, it's funky, it made everything feel like a joke, but at the same time it makes you go, huh, that's cute, I like this music now, because it's like 1980s kind of like super cheesy synth pop like a movie. You just watched the movie, this entire album is a movie. It's like a vaporwave film. It hasn't been made yet, but there is going to be a vaporwave film one day and I'm probably gonna direct it. Just letting you guys know that. So thank you for watching this review. Do you want to know what I would give it on a scale of one to 10? Well, too bad, because I don't do that shit. I don't believe in numbers. I'm going to give this album one spicy meatball. So tell me what you guys think of the album. I thought it was an interesting side venture of the whole vaporwave genre and like the whole parody self parody kind of like oh i'm looking at it but i'm not i'm doing it but i'm not everything is kind of dumb so tell me what you guys think of the album uh did you love it did you hate it tell me what type of vibes it gave you tell me how it made you feel tell me how you'd re rate it in a numerical order uh i've been your host frank jeff c see you on the next video where i do stuff